Hello, is this uh, Mr. Daniels? Yes, it is. How are you doing, sir? This is Felix in Austin from Pipe Bomb Radio. Thank you for joining us tonight. No worries. How's it going, guys? Having a great night here. Just uh, watching Tombstone as I was waiting to give you a call. Have you seen that movie? Uh, no, I've never had a chance to sit down and watch it top to bottom. So, Good, good movie, good movie. But um, Anywho, uh, we have you here tonight to talk a couple, talk about a couple of things. And, of course, top of the list, of course, we got uh, TNA's biggest pay-per-view of the year, Bound for Glory, this Sunday night. You, you excited okay. for it? Yeah, man, it's, you know, it's the, the culmination of a big year for us. So, uh, you know, everybody's going to be given a little bit extra just because they know it's the big show, and uh, I'm no exception, of course. Absolutely. And from what uh, we've seen on here, you actually have a, uh, a show before the actual show where you actually will be competing in, the, uh, in a tag team match to see who will be taking on the tag team champions, uh, Gunner and... Uh, I, lost, I went blank on the other name. Oh, my God. James Storm. <laughs> James Storm. James Storm. I'm sorry. I went blank for a second there. Uh, and at this, at this point, I, I, I got to say, man, I, I got to go with you and, and, and Kaz to come out of this winning and going on for the tag team titles. You guys have been on a pretty good roll as of late. Uh, uh, I, I, would, I would disagree with you if you were wrong, but you're 100% right. So. <laughs> But uh, I know that uh, my co-host here definitely has been excited to speak with you as well. He's got a few questions for you, so I'm going to let you go ahead and fire away, Austin. Got Wait, a few well, questions you, for Mr. Well, you have a you have been a, a great career so far. You know, definitely. And I think there's so many, so much we have to look forward to in the future. But from the start on, what influenced you to become a professional wrestler? Uh, well, I grew up in North Carolina, so I watched it as a kid. Uh, I grew up watching guys like Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes uh, in the Mid-Atlantic Territories. And, um, you know, that sort of influenced the type of wrestling that I was, uh, that I like to watch, that athletic, uh, that athletic style that, uh, you know, Flair and Rhodes and, uh, you know, guys like the Rock and Roll Express and uh, uh, the Midnight Express, the Russians, uh, Magnum TA, wow. Sting, like all those guys in that, in that time period. That's the type of wrestling that I grew up watching, so that's what got me into it. And um, once I graduated college and uh, I had a degree in theater, I was trying to be an actor in the Chicago area. And uh, just for, I guess, just to give it a shot, I, I found a wrestling school out there and decided to give it a try uh, during a lull in my acting career. And it ended up turning into something that I, I kept doing, and, and sooner or later, like maybe six years down the road, it became my career. And, you know, nice. speaking of Sting, you actually wrestled with him last week on Impact uh, against some um, when he was tagging with Magnus. How was it, you know, wrestling against somebody you watched, you know, uh, when you were growing up? Uh, it's sort of surreal, man. I mean, uh, you know, I've had a lot of dealings with people that I grew up watching, guys like Dusty and Hulk and uh, Sting. Uh, and, and uh, yeah, it, it's it's sort of surreal to know that you grew up as, as a kid watching these guys wrestle, and then they, in turn watch you wrestle and appreciate your hard work. And, and in the case of seeing someone that I've actually wrestled uh, more than once and uh, to know that he, uh, you know, he respects your work and knows that uh, you're a formidable opponent, that's a, that's a pretty cool feeling. Absolutely. And you actually had a, uh, you got to actually get a piece of uh, what it was like working in the WWE at one point and eventually made this, made the transition over to TNA Working in in front of both crowds, what, what would you say would be some of the if there if there is any really any differences of working between the two crowds? Would there be what would you say would there be? Well, I, I think that the difference is just uh, the the length of time that WWE has been you know involved or in business. Um, they've got a much wider spotlight put on them. There's much more uh, awareness of their brand. And I think yeah. TNA, you know, we're only 11 years old, and, uh, you know, we're slowly but surely getting more and more people aware of us. Uh, you know, now that we're traveling, doing impact on the road, uh, I think that's definitely opening a lot more eyes to our product. And so I think it's just a matter of time before we start to, you know, get uh, comfortable being on the road every other week, uh, turning it into every week, hopefully. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll grow our, our audience slowly but surely. 
you know, definitely with the doubters and the shouters, you guys have proved a lot of them wrong and have come a long way. Because I remember when I first started watching TNA in 2004, when it was on, I believe it was Fox Sportsnet, correct me if I'm wrong on that, and they were doing the weekly pay-per-views to get a TV deal up to now, and it's come as long as far as you guys have come. You definitely have shut up the, the doubters and the shouters, and you know what, I, the best is yet to come from you guys. I I always I always say that it would be a great thing to have, you know, another alternative to watch as opposed to WWE because, they, you know, they're not the only thing to watch. And I think that once TNA is being able, is able to hit more, more uh, I want to say more different, because I, I don't know if Spike reaches a lot of places in the United States, although it does reach a lot. I don't know if it reaches every place in the United States, and I think a lot more people need to be aware of you guys. Would you agree? Absolutely. I mean, you know, we we uh, that's part of the plan is is building the brand and continuing to to grow and get more people aware. Um, you know, the the amount of people that was watching that was watching professional wrestling during the Monday Night Wars uh, is certainly a lot more than the amount that if you add our audience and WWE's audience together, it's a lot more then than it is now. And so yeah. you've got to ask yourself where those people went. And um, I, I just think a lot of those people aren't really aware that there's an alternative to WWE. And it's just, uh, you know, all we can do is, is continue to work hard and, uh, you know, try and get some buzz and some word of mouth going about our product and uh, continue to grow that product uh, through Spike TV and, and through putting out great television. Absolutely. And at this point, I, I, I have to mention what we had seen on Impact, I believe it was last week, coming out dressed up in the Dumb and Dumber outfits, I mean, you and Kaz have put on some of the most some of the most entertaining television and probably the most fun things to watch on television. I have to see in, in I've seen on TNA in a long time, and I have to say thank you for that. That's been some great TV, man. Well, thanks. Uh, you know, that's the goal. Frankie and I were always trying to figure out ways to stand out. Um, you know, that's that's part of the game is to try and of all the people that are in the locker room, we're trying to be the guys that you end up talking about the next day or on Twitter or online or with your friends at the water cooler, if there is such a thing anymore. And, um, you know, that, that, that's been the game so far, is to just try and get people talking about what that and, influence is going to do next. And was it hard to hold a straight face when you guys were doing that? I mean, because it, it, was, it was pretty hilarious to see, how, see the reaction from the crowd, and, and I can imagine people watching around the world or around, you know, around, here, around the United States, just the reaction of that, uh, the, the induction of uh, Bobby Roode into the, uh, is it the Eagle Hall of Fame? Uh, no, we're, we're consummate professionals, so, no, you got it right. I'm just telling you it wasn't hard to keep a straight face because we're consummate professionals. We don't crack. We don't break. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're going to break or crack on television, you probably aren't ready to be on television. So <laughs> That's a very good point. That is a and very it took good point. Bobby Roode one week to get into a Hall of Fame. My God. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and... Do you have come as far as you guys have come at this point? Do you? I mean, with Kaz, you guys have, have reached a lot of goals together. Do you see a, a future as far as maybe going for the world title, possibly X Division title? Because I know that uh, the X Division has been coming back up and it's starting to get re-noticed again. Any chances of you or, or even you and Frankie both going for it, or maybe you or what? Do, what do you think? Absolutely. I mean, you look at you look at the X Division Championship at Bound for Glory. You got former world champions Jeff Hardy and Austin Aries and Chris Sabin and Samoa Joe all vying for that title. So I mean, that title is as important as it's ever been. And Manic, who's a great champion at this point, um, he's got a lot of experience, but not as much as we do. And uh, you know, if we decide to go after that title, especially coming up around De- Destination X where having the X Division title means you get an opportunity to be the world heavyweight champion. That's certainly a goal of mine. But being world champion is also a goal. Uh, Frankie and I are looking forward to one of us becoming world champion in the future. Um, you know, and it doesn't matter which one of us it is because we're both uh, each other's greatest supporters and, and we've got each other's backs. And that's the beauty of this tag team is that it doesn't matter if we're together tagging or if we decide to go singles, we still are back in each other's play, and we're still supporting each other 100%. And you guys are actually going to be at Bounce for Glory this Sunday night on pay-per-view. Um, pre-show gauntlet match with, uh, against Park and EY, the Bromans and Chavo and Hernandez. Whoever wins the match is actually going to go and uh, 
face James Storm and Gunner for the tag team championships later in the night. You know, it's was that a question or were you just telling me what I already knew? <laughs> oh, no, I'm just telling. <laughs> I wasn't sure what that, what that, that was. Exactly. Okay. I agree with but, you. That is 100% correct. All of that was true. <laughs> now, at this point, you've you've had different uh, tag partners throughout the years, uh, or even uh, going back to, I believe you had, and I think I have, I hope I said this name correctly, I believe his name was uh, Elix Skipper at one point. Uh, he's he's right? been Elix Skipper at every point, yes. But yes, at yes. one point we were tag champions. And you've actually... Uh, you guys had some. You had a pretty incredible match years ago when the I believe it was something about the suplex. I believe, or I don't know how it was, but he, you know, you guys just had some amazing matches together. But over the years, who were some of your you know favorite tag team partners to you to have worked with besides, of course, Frankie? But uh, did you enjoy? I mean, you had. Who were some of your favorites? I guess is my question. Well, definitely Frankie first and foremost. He's the one that I've. Uh, had the longest relationship with, and we've we've been fortunate enough to stick together uh, for the past yeah. two years. And I don't even think we've scratched the surface of how good we can be uh, if given the opportunity. But I mean, you know, I, I had success with AJ as a partner. I had success with uh, with Elix uh, in TNA, and then over in Ring of Honor, I had success with uh, Matt Seidel and with Donovan Morgan. So I, I mean, I, I'm I'm well acquainted with tag team wrestling, and I feel like. Uh, I'm a good fit for a lot of guys because I, I know what it takes to complement different wrestlers and uh, and I know what it takes to make the team the most important part uh, rather than the individual when it comes to tag team wrestling. Um, I, I feel like the best teams are the ones that sort of put the team ahead of their own personal goals and, and make the team the priority. That's actually a very good way to say that, very good way to explain that. Uh, I do have a question from Twitter uh, what was your all-time favorite match that you have competed in in your career with TNA Wrestling? If there's one. If you can think of just uh, one, I don't know. You've had many. Well, I'd have to say the the first three-way match with AJ and Joe that that stands out just because of uh, people's reactions to it and how people have taken it and how it still sort of stands the test of time as one of the best matches in the company's history. So, I mean, that that to me. Uh, the feeling of satisfaction when we were done with that match and how we had sort of pulled it off, um, you know, that still that still means a lot to me. And I know the same uh, is true with Joe and AJ. They're still very proud of, of what we did that night. Yeah, you guys have you guys have come a long way. You you AJ Joe James Storm. A lot of the guys who were there from the very beginning have come a long way. And my next question I wanted to go about was it's it's still kind of sticking to the group scenario, but you actually got to be a part of the fortune team and it was kind of it was kind of well i don't know it was it, some would say it would be kind of like the the four horsemen so to speak kind of thing but uh teenage version of it i guess you could say fortune do you feel that it could have had a better run do you think it ran its course do you think it could have went it any other way than it did i mean how do you, do you feel about the the team of fortune well, I feel like when before I got there, they were they were pretty much doing everything they wanted to do, and they were having a great success. Um, once I joined the team, and they had sort of been baby faces, um, you know, I, I don't, I'm not sure that that was a, a good setup. Um, you know, th- those sort of teams are better set for for being you know the villains of the crew, and I think they had a really good run when they were the villains. But um, yeah, I think they did everything they wanted to do. AJ was world champion. Um, you know, Beer Money was. Uh, Beer Money was the tag champs at the time. Frankie was X Division champion, and uh, any faction that can, you know, sort of gather all the championships in the company at once, you can't say that they, you know, underperformed at all. True, very true. And at this point, you guys even uh, with even now with Ego, I'm sure the gold is on, is next on your list. And obviously, with you going for the, uh, you guys going for the tag titles this Sunday night, and Bobby possibly getting back into either the uh, world title or X Division title race. I'm sure he's going to be, you guys going to be running a rough shot over TNA pretty soon as it looks like aces and eights are going to pretty much all but disappear eventually. Uh, they, things aren't seem, seeming to go too well for Bully Ray and his crew as they've slowly started to disappear. Uh, i got to ask, what do you feel is the connection that fans have to the matches that you and AJ have had over the years? You guys have had numerous times that you guys have faced each other at the pay-per-views you guys have had, and it just seems to work. Every time you guys get together, you guys put on 
if not the match of the night, no doubt match of the year. Why do you think the well, fans get so well with you a, as a fan? Well, we, we have a good chemistry. Uh, we work well against each other, and I feel like, uh, you know, over the period of time, you know, continuously putting out good matches, I feel like people have come to expect a level of quality out of the matches between the two of us, and they know whenever he and I face off against each other, um, you know, we're not going to phone it in. We're out there working hard and, and trying to make each match different, despite the fact that we've wrestled so often in the past 10 years. And, um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, when you know when you know that AJ and I are going to wrestle each other, you know you're going to get a good match. And getting to work within the Ring of Honor with a lot of the guys that are, are you know, guys like uh, Brian Danielson, uh, Loki, uh I believe at one point you even got to work with uh, CM Punk at one point when he was still around there. What? Uh, how do you? I mean, working with those guys and seeing the success they've come, they've come to experience at one point. Uh, well, in this case with uh, with Brian, and the current success he's got with WWE right now. Do you think that Ring of Honor? I mean, would it be? Would you say it'd be looked at as maybe the developing ground for a lot of the success for for you guys to have experienced? before you guys actually made it to, like TNA, he's made it to WWE. Would you consider that being the starting ground as where it all began for you guys? I mean, did it begin before Ring of Honor? Well, I just think it became, uh, I don't know if I'd say it's the starting ground. I think it was one of the reasons or one of the places that I got the most exposure. I mean, once uh, ECW closed and WCW closed, and there were places, there weren't as many places to wrestle. Once Ring of Honor opened and, because of their fan base in the Philadelphia area, area and, uh, you know, the, the buzz around the matches that we were having in Philly in that first year, I think, uh, you know, there was, a lot of, uh, there was a lot of buzz, there was a lot of spotlight sort of put on us, and we were all working to make a name for ourselves. And so I think it was just, uh, you know, all the stars sort of aligned. We had a lot of great talent in that locker room and guys that were struggling to sort of break through and uh, get themselves known on a national level. And, um, you know, and the same thing with TNA, like the guys that were in TNA at the very beginning, the same, same idea. There were guys that were working hard to build something from the base up and uh, try to make a name for themselves. And um, you look at the, the roster of the guys that have been with TNA the entire time or guys that have been in Ring of Honor, um, you know, they, they've worked very hard and built their names up. And now both companies are sort of synonymous with, uh, with great wrestling. Actually, very good point. Very, very good point. Because now, I mean, there's there's uh, there's a lot more to watch. I mean, in my opinion, personally, I mean, there you, you don't necessarily have to just turn on to watch WWE or, or or TNA. You can actually watch Ring of Honor and other. Th- there's more capability to watch other things that are out there now, as opposed to maybe a few years ago. But um, that is a good answer. Uh, working in the uh, excuse me, uh, working it with the. Uh, Guys like uh, Flair and Hogan, I mean, coming into your company with TNA Wrestling, did you ever get down, get to get a chance to sit and actually talk with um, with either, you know, the, even Sting for that matter, about uh, maybe just any kind of advice as far as the wrestling business goes? And if so, was there anything that they've actually mentioned to you that kind of stuck with you that you or you've actually used in your own life as far as where you want to go with your wrestling career? Um. Yeah, I got a chance to really talk with them. It wasn't really, you know, like what I wanted to do with my wrestling career or anything. I just, just little things, um, you know, little ways of uh, improving your, your game. Um, mm-hmm. You know, nothing really specific stands out in my head right now. But, um, you know, they were always available to chat and uh, give advice, and, and being able to work with those guys was a, a, a distinct pleasure, really. Absolutely. And you know, getting to see oh, – I'm sorry, go ahead, Austin. You know, going off the subject of wrestling for a second, I think it's only fair we talk about Breaking Bad. The, the series that was loved by so many people is now over just a few weeks ago. But you yourself actually being a huge fan of the show, what do you think you know attracted so many people to tune in and watch it each week? Um, well, I just think the if you sort of put yourself in, in Walter White's shoes, like what would you do in that situation and some of the choices that he made, I think it was uh, you know surprising sometimes. Uh, the decisions that he made, and when you finally realized that he wasn't really the good-hearted guy that he started out being, how he changed, and, and uh, watching that descent 
from you know being a family man to doing what he ended up doing in the end. I think it was an interesting uh, it was an interesting show and uh, well written and great characters and great acting. So were you like rooting for Walter the entire season series? No, I, I actually I actually wanted Walter to to sort of get caught and sort of pay oh. the price because I I I, re- I realized early on in the series that he had uh, sort of stopped being the gallant uh, you know the guy fighting cancer and the guy fighting for his family and uh, he's he sort of let his ego take over in some of the decisions that he made so I knew that he wasn't really uh, you know doing the wrong things for the right reasons he was doing wrong because he wanted to do wrong. And, and so I, I recognized that early on. And, um, you know, I, I figured it was going to be a matter of time before something happened. And I think that the way they, they finished the series, uh, you know, he, he still sort of sought his redemption and got as much of it as he could before he passed away. You know, with a series like that, I don't think you can get any better. I mean, that, that I think that's one of the greatest shows of all time that's ever been put on TV. Uh, well, I think a lot of people agree with you. Others that- well, I don't know. I had to kind of disagree on that one, but that's just my opinion. But well, some do and some don't, I guess, man. I I think it's great. I don't know if I'd call it the greatest, but I I certainly did enjoy it. No doubt. Absolutely, absolutely. And going back into the, uh, the to the wrestling aspect of your career, um, when the time comes that you feel maybe you've contributed all to the wrestling business, which I'm sure is going to be years from now, do you see yourself kind of going into the position, maybe a commentator, maybe a manager, maybe a backstage help, uh, uh, I don't know what they call them, uh, agents, I guess you can call it, working in the other, any, any other aspect of the, of the wrestling business as opposed to being in the ring, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, my, my main goal would to try, would be to try and, uh, be a commentator of some sort. I feel like I could, uh, add to the presentation of TNA if I were to, to, you know, one day become a commentator. Um, you know, there'd be big shoes to fill with guys like Mike, Mike Tanay and Taz because, uh, you know, they're two of the best that have ever really done the job. And uh, But, I mean, I, I don't know. I think you can hang with get them. that chance to do that. What's that? I think you can definitely hang with them. They, uh, with, with, with the kind of character you have on television, I definitely think you can keep up with Taz and, and Tanay for, for sure. And if not, Well, that's you know very what? kind of you to say, but, I mean, I know that it's a lot harder than it looks. Well, and the few times oh, that I've done uh, guest commentary, I, I know that, uh, you know, just being out there for five minutes is difficult. And these guys are out there two hours, three hours at a time, um, you know, nonstop. So I, I certainly respect the effort that they put into their job, and I know that it's not a cakewalk. And if I were to, uh, you know, seriously entertain the idea of becoming a commentator, I would definitely have my work cut out for me. And i got to ask, uh where, where did the idea come from, and I'm sure you've been asked this before, uh, of the Apple Teenies? Just curious. Um, well, it just it just started as a, a spot. I had an idea where I wanted to propose a toast to our team, and uh, you know, I figured what drink was instantly recognizable as what it was, and I thought Apple Teeny was perfect. Visually, I thought it was a great-looking drink, and um, it certainly... It, invoked a, a certain response from the people that were watching and I just had the uh, I had the opportunity to continue to carry it around with me to the point where people sort of expect it out of me now and so uh, I made it part of my, my shtick and uh, you know now everybody sort of expects me to have one at some point <laughs> but you don't actually uh, drink apple teenies uh, away from the ring do you absolutely they're delicious uh, one of the <laughs> keeps the doctor away I don't know if you knew that I didn't know that, actually, for those who are listening tonight, now you know. Yes, now you know. <laughs> now, in the idea of uh, your career that you've, you've, you've definitely wrestled for a number of years, uh, going into the aspect of maybe uh, going maybe uh, tr- as creating maybe a wrestling school, working down in OVW at one point, training the next generation, is that something that you see maybe later down the line? Um, no, not really. I don't know if I've got the temperament to be a good trainer. Um, certainly not by myself. I, I think maybe if I were to be part of a crew, maybe I could contribute in that way. But um, I, I, uh, I think it takes a special type of guy to to take a person from the very beginning and sort of train them. Um, you know, and I, I have great respect for guys like Lance Storm and uh, uh, Team 3D, the guys that have schools and actively work to build that next generation that you're talking about. 
Um, you know, but I never say never. I've, I've never uh, crossed it off my list as something I'd never do. So I mean, who knows what who knows what the future would bring? That's a good point. And knowing that TNA has got uh, their own little podcast, or from what I've what I've seen and what I've heard, would that be an aspect of uh, interest for you at one point in, in your career, uh, somewhere down the line, to maybe um, e- either with TNA or once you've decided to retire at one point later down the line, something of a podcast for you, maybe the uh, Christopher Daniels show, the Fallen Angel show. I mean, hey. It's got a nice ring to it. I don't you? know, man. I, I hadn't really thought about that. Uh, you know, I see guys like Colt Cabana who've been successful doing their own thing, guys like Steve Austin that just recently started his own. Um, Absolutely. You know, I, if, if there was an avenue and, and a different take so that I wouldn't – I mean, I would hate to come off like a copy of either one of those guys who are doing great work on their own. And, um, you know, if I could think of a different avenue or a different, uh, uh, a different way to approach – uh, a podcast, maybe that would be something I could do. But um, yeah, right now it's it's hard for me to think about what I'm going to be doing past uh, past wrestling, just because I still feel like I'm so deep into my own career. Uh, oh no, you know, I, I can't see an end anytime soon. Of course, no. At this point, no. This is just yeah. It's just kind of thinking ahead, but uh, considering that you, you know, like I said, this is still years down the line. You still, I know that you still got a lot left to contribute to to the fans and and. That was more of a mention in the fact that you, I mean, because you do have a following, you do have a, a huge fan base, and I think I think fans would definitely listen in to hear what you got to say, what kind of uh, crazy characters you bring on with you, and just the kind of fun you have, and, and that's what a lot of people do with their shows. They have a lot of fun, and, and people really feed off of that, and I think just like with your character, you know, with uh, you and uh, Frankie on, on television, as goofy as you guys get, they feed off of the fact that you guys are so entertaining, and that's what I think is a key to you guys' continued success as a tag team, just my opinion, but... Well, I will keep that in mind. That sounds like wise words. Well, I don't know. You, you, you're definitely more experienced in that avenue than I am. I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at it as a fan's perspective. Nothing more. But um, I do want to ask um, if there are ways for fans to keep on keep in contact with you. I know that you have a Twitter. It's at fac daniels. Is that correct? Yes, it is. One hundred percent. And if they, if you, you do have a website. Is that correct? Yep, uh, Um Unfortunately, I'm woefully behind in terms of keeping up with it, uh, but my mm-hmm. my uh, webmaster, Jay Ryan, does a great job of updating it for me, and um, one day I'm going to get off my lazy butt and uh, <laughs> do more to uh, update it uh, and help him with it. Um, but he, he does the lion's share of the work, and he does a great job. I do have uh, two more questions, and then I'm going to hand it over to Austin. But... Um, if you at one point in your career seen yourself as having a manager of choosing, uh, it could be past or present, that you could see fitting the, your, your character today, or would you even see yourself having a manager? If you could choose a manager, who would you have liked to have worked with and why? Uh huh. I don't know. I, I, I never really thought I I, uh, I didn't necessarily thought I need a manager, but I mean, I like working with certain guys. Um, there was a period of time where I, I had a uh, a relationship in certain independent uh, companies with uh, Jim Mitchell, who was always a great manager and a great talker. Um, Absolutely. So I mean, he was he was someone whose work I always enjoyed, and uh, when I got a chance to work with him, I thought it, uh, I thought we had a really good chemistry together. So I mean, he's the first guy that I would think of. He doesn't get the credit he he deserves, I believe, but I mean, definitely a great manager. And as far as a dream match, if you have a dream match that you feel you haven't re- actually had yet but would would like to have had or would like to have in your career, who would you feel you'd have that dream match with? Um, well, I've always been a big fan of uh, Chris Jericho's work. I've always felt like he was like the perfect blend of, of athlete and entertainer. And I've always looked up to him as far as, uh, uh, you know, trying to reach those heights in both of those aspects. And so, uh, you know, I think working with him would be a great learning experience and uh, a lot of fun. No doubt about that. I mean, he's he's definitely... When I seen that he had had his song, uh, Enemy, I believe, a few years ago on one of you guys' favorite reviews, it kind of gave the impression that maybe Chris was going to contemplate coming to TNA for a little bit. Seeing a match with you guys is not something that still is, is impossible. Hopefully it's something that could be done in the in the very near future, future a couple of years from now, who knows. But a great choice, no doubt. Um, oh, I do want to ask him. Um, no problem. Uh, 
my co-host here, Austin. Did you have any final questions for uh, Mr. Daniels for tonight? Yeah, definitely. I was going to say that um, there's a quote that I that I love a lot. That's why live a life if you don't at least do something remarkable. And, and you've definitely done a lot of remarkable stuff in your lives. So, I mean, if you had any ad- advice for anybody out, outside of this, you know, um, about whoever wants to become a professional wrestler, what advice would you give them? Um, well, first of all, I'd tell them to prepare for a lot of hard work. Um, I think professional wrestling is a job that, you know, the best the best of us make it look easy. And so I think sometimes people that are getting into it aren't aware of how hard it actually is. So, I mean, just I prepare for that. that that hard work. And then um, once you're in it, I think, you know, if you try and broaden your horizons as much as you can, try and wrestle as many different people as you can for as many different promoters as you can because I think the best way to become successful is to become comfortable with yourself to the point where it doesn't matter where you are or where you go. Like if you meet someone for the very first time, if you can wrestle a good match with them, you know, that same day that you meet them, the odds are good that you're going to become a commodity because promoters know that no matter where, who they put you in the ring with, you're going to go out there and perform at the best of your ability and entertain. And I think those are the those are the guys that make careers of it, the ones that get that reputation of, of being, you know, good workers and, and uh, you know, entertaining wrestlers. And uh, no matter who they get in the ring with, they go out and, and perform, you know, at the top level. Those are the guys that get jobs and impress promoters and, and continue to work. Wow. Good and true words from a... Uh, no Green doubt, General. a future TNA a Hall of Famer, no doubt, in the future. I'm sorry, Austin, well, you were saying something. No, I was saying he's the Ring General. That's what that's what he does. And, you know, I want to, I, on behalf of me and, and everybody else, I mean, what you guys do, that's so much respect to have for, for what you guys do. I mean, I can't even tell you. Oh, well, thanks very much, man. Uh, we appreciate it. If it wasn't for you guys watching and sort of following along, I mean, we wouldn't be where we are. So, I mean... Uh, you know, we owe a debt of gratitude to the fan base that stays passionate about our work. And, um, you know, I don't know if we get a chance to say thank you enough, but, uh, you know, when we do things like fan interaction on the weekends, like Bound for Glory weekend, um, you know, that's an opportunity for us to sort of say thanks to the fans, and uh, that's something we're going to be doing this Saturday. Yes, sir. And interaction for Bound for Glory. Make sure you guys check it out on pay-per-view this Sunday night. And we'll be uh, rooting for... Bad influence to take the tag team gold that night. Uh, I also will be rooting for bad influence. I'll also be betting money on bad influence. Man, me too. <laughs> we have something in common. But, uh, Mr. Daniels, it has been an extreme honor and a pleasure to actually have you on here with us for the last uh, 35 minutes that you've hung with us. Can't thank you enough for making time to do that. We wish you the best for you guys at pay-per-view this coming Sunday. I know I can speak for both myself and Austin. We will be watching. And we will be running right, well, on, and, uh, and uh, we wish you the very best, and enjoy your night, sir. All right, man. Thanks for calling, and thanks for having me on the show. All righty. Take care now. All right. Take care. This is Vinny. Hello. How you doing? What's going on, guys? Good. How are you? All right. All right. We're just sitting here jibber-jabbering about... Uh, What's right and what's wrong in our opinion in the wrestling business, but they, you know we're fans. I don't know. I don't. We don't know much. Right, we right. just know what we like. <laughs> That's all. That's all that matters, man. But um, we thank you for joining us tonight and for agreeing to come on uh, right after uh, we got uh, Mr. Daniels on here. Uh, oh, really do appreciate me. that. We've definitely been promoting you coming on, and uh, for the fact that you were able to be okay with uh, making it a double feature, we do appreciate that. I appreciate it as well. Thank you for having me. But um, I'll go ahead and kick it off, and and where we always do as far as how your beginning started in professional wrestling. I mean, what kind of got you interested in wanting to be an actual, you know, be a pro pro wrestler? Uh, Well, I always watched it since I was a kid, a little kid. My aunt was actually huge into professional wrestling. She was a big-time Bret Hart fan, um, nice. And even before that, my father always liked it. And uh, when I was a kid, I was big into the Ultimate Warrior and uh, the Rockers. Um, and wow, that's way back. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's way back. I remember still too going to the 
Uh, I'm from like Providence, Rhode Island area, so I remember going to the arena around the corner and uh, having like the Ultimate Warrior arm ties on while I'm on my dad's shoulders and whatever. Um, I was big on the Ultimate Warrior because he was like that flashy. He had the flashy look and the colors and the different the different gear and the you know. So I really got into that because I'm huge into um, I'm huge into look and like uh, the entertainment and production part of wrestling. So um, seeing him always with that flashy look to him and the same goes yeah. to the rockers with the tassels and the cool gear. I was always big well, on that. That was the that, 80s so. for you too, though. Right, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm a huge 80s fan, too. I love 80s movies. Uh, my favorite film, actually, is The Lost Boys from the 80s. Um, I, I would not have guessed that looking at your posts on Facebook. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, but... I know, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I am a huge uh, 80s fan. Um, but also... Uh, yeah, so going back then, um, Bret Hart, uh, my aunt always liked, and I was a Bret Hart fan too, um, coming up as well as Shawn Michaels as well. Um, and that's kind of where it all started. And then, um, it's funny, uh, you know, I did the thing in the backyard with my friends through junior high school and, uh, you know, elementary school, whatever, playing wrestling and, on um, the ultimate yeah. warrior and, you know, all that good stuff. And then, um, I actually went into, like, um, I met up with somebody that, uh, it was a girl that went to high school with me, and she said, hey, you want to be involved in wrestling? I know my boyfriend does independent wrestling. And I didn't think, I didn't even know independent wrestling existed at the time. I thought Vince McMahon was going to walk into my backyard and say, hey, you want a job? <laughs> and, <laughs> and hire me from my backyard. But that's not, that's being young and not knowing anything. Um, so... I met with this guy, and I went to um, uh, a training, I guess you could say they were having, and he didn't really have a good reputation in professional wrestling in, in the independent circuit in the area, um, but I didn't know any better because I was young and I didn't know where to go or what good schools were out there or anything else like that. So I got into some shows without very limited training, and I did DFW shows, and one day I was wrestling there and um, somebody in the crowd who was training at the Spike Dudley School, um, which I'm a graduate of now. Spike Dudley was my trainer. Um, Congratulations. Um, this is in Fall River, Mass. And he came, this guy came here by the name, his name's Ryan Drew. He was an assistant trainer of Spike Dudley. And he had pulled me aside and he said, look, you have no idea what the hell you're doing. Um, what you're doing in the ring right now is completely wrong. Um, you're not heading in the right direction. Uh, go to get, he would pretty much like, he would crap all over me every time we'd go to these shows. But he always told me that it was because he saw potential in me that I had potential to go further. Um, because, you know, I worked out, I, Put, I invested into gear for myself, where the, all these other guys are just kind of doing it for fun with each other. I kind of yeah. wanted to take it serious, but I didn't know which direction to go. So he uh, guided me in the right direction. One day I just kind of said, you know, I'm just going to go. I went there, and Spike Dudley had told me to have a match with somebody that was there. Um, so I got in the ring, had a match with him, and I was done. Spike just shook his head. He said, you don't know anything what you're doing. Um, you're going to get hurt, blah, blah, blah. So I was kind of like, oh, well, do I even want to do this? Should I do this? Because at that point, I'd already done so many of those other shows at those VFWs without any training. So there I thought I was doing okay, but I didn't know any better. So Spike was, you know, there to tell me, uh, kind of break me down and build me back up. So then I, ever since then, um, I've been a student of the Spike Dudley uh, School, which is called the Lockup Academy. Um, so that's how that started, pretty much with my wrestling career. So basically, your criticism yeah. is the best advice. Doesn't I'm sorry? Sort of, I said criticism is the best advice because it sounds like you didn't, that the people that you talk to, and it's grateful that you have people like that, but that they didn't sugarcoat anything that they said because it was, because truth you know, speaks volumes. Right, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was... Uh, you know, and I'm thankful that 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 Ryan had 
noticed me um, and thought I had more potential because who knows where I'd be right now, you know. Um, I think I would have eventually found a good school somewhere and moved on myself just with, like, maturing, getting older and understanding more. Um, but it's I'm still thankful that, you know, I was able to get the training that I did, you know, having training by, like, Spike Dudley, Mike Bennett. Um, those two guys put a lot of time into me. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty thankful for that. And you've had quite a career so far, getting the chance to uh, work with just, like you said, the guys like uh, Mike Bennett, who's definitely one of the uh, bright shining stars of Ring of Honor Wrestling currently. And I believe you've even had uh, competed with Ring of Honor a little bit. Uh, how is that going for you? And how are you, I mean, how I can imagine the Ring of Honor crowds are, are pretty intense. I mean, they they really they really get behind the 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 Ring of Honor guys and, and their matches because they have some pretty badass matches actually. Right, yeah, Ring of Honor is awesome, and I love my experience that I've had with them so far. Um, I started with doing Ring of Honor shots um, in 2011, around April, I believe it was my first one, and it was a squash match against Rhino, actually. Um, <laughs> they had brought me in. Um, I think I, I impressed them at one of like the first camps, tryout camps I went to, and they... Uh, had me come in, and I, you know, I did a squash match with Rhino. Nothing big, but um, just that little bit that I did with Rhino, the, he was very pleased, and um, Ring of Honor was very pleased with the performance. Um, so they had me keep coming back, and then uh, it led to you know dark matches. Then I, you know, competed for a contract in a four-way match when uh, that's when they gave um, QT Marshall his contract. Um, and that was with me, Matt Taven, and Antonio Thomas in the four-way in Providence, my hometown. Um, and then I did some other shots, like Pittsburgh. I had a really good match with uh, Tommaso Ciampa, who's one of my favorite opponents, actually. Um, and, you know, the, the Pittsburgh, Philly. Um, I did the Death Before the Sonner show this past Death Before the Sonner in Philly. That just happened recently. Um, I know that, that Austin watched that, watched that show. He was definitely impressed with that show. That, that was a great show. And you know, I always say this, the Ring of, Ring of Honor, I, I honestly can't say I've seen a bad show Ring of Honor because they never, ever, ever, ever feel to impress. I mean, I, I haven't seen a bad match yet. I mean, that's just, you know, I haven't seen one. And it's I don't think they have the power to put on a, put on a bad match. You understand? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll t- and I'll tell you, like, Ring of Honor has sucked great. Like, wrestle, like pure wrestlers, you know. Like, um, as where WWE has a lot of, like, production and entertainment, um, Ring of Honor is just, just so that, that wrestling niche. And, like, they have such a niche crowd. Um, um, so And it's a hard crowd to win over. Um, but th- there's just great athletes on the entire roster. It's, and I'm thankful to even be you know, a part and be able to stand in that ring with those guys because they, they're just phenomenal, all of them. Well, I actually a, have like to a... say that you have such a likable type character, at least judging from what I've seen. Uh, you have pretty interesting tastes as far as, like, the the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Lost Boy kind of stuff. And <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I was just looking at that and I was like, yeah, you you know what? I, you're actually probably from, you grew up in the same generation as I did because I remember when the, yeah. the turtles were pretty hot and the super super shredder and the the ball headed guy that grunted and didn't say much. But, oh um, yeah, <laughs> I am, man. I'm a I'm a huge um, huge huge movie buff. Like I'm getting married in about a week uh, next Sunday. Oh, congratulations! Thank you. And um, our wedding is actually a uh, movie, <laughs> movie-based wedding. So, like, you know, before, so um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's going to be great. Like, even before, like, the wedding, the bridal party walks down the aisle, we're going to play, like, the 20th Century Fox intro. So it's, like, starting <laughs> oh, the wedding. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, we got some cool things yes. planned for it. Hopefully you guys post some pictures. Oh yeah, absolutely. There'll be some pictures up there. You know, talking sure. about movies, and well, this is really a really a movie. I'm talking about series. We were talking about with Chris Daniels oh, uh, an hour ago, Breaking Bad. You, you watched that oh, show? Oh God, I knew you were gonna go. I with do that not question. watch Breaking you Bad. You have to watch I've it. Heard. You have to watch it. <laughs> you know, um, I'm pretty um, I'm pretty good friends with Matt Hardy, and he actually uh, 
tried to get me on the Breaking Bad uh, bandwagon <laughs> there. But I can't. I just, I don't know. I can get into it. You know what show I do like, though, that's out there right now is American Horror Story. That's probably my favorite. You know, that's got a twisted type of stories with it. I tried to watch it, and, and I was like, you know, because it, it, it kind of brought me in a little bit, and I was like, whoa, okay, that's just a yeah, little yeah. twisted for my taste. But it's it was good. Crazy. Don't get me wrong. It's just a little yeah. twisted. And I actually get into shows like uh, Sons of Anarchy, actually. That's good. That's good. Because, I mean, but, I actually uh, found myself telling people, like, I will pay you to watch Breaking Bad. I mean, this show, <laughs> and I'm not just saying, it's just every single thing, like every little thing, the little things about the show is what makes it so good. I mean, I can't well, even tell case, you how good it is. In that case, since I'm paying for this big wedding, uh, start writing the check, so I'll give you my address, and uh, I'll start watching that. <laughs> okay, definitely. <laughs> you might want to be careful how you word your words there, Austin. <laughs> well, I will do it. I'm not kidding. It breaks me bad. It's oh, worth I'm it. just yes, kidding. I know. No, and, and and having Matt Hardy being as big a, a big a lover of that show, and trust me, I know he is because I've seen his tweets and and his posts on Facebook and so forth. He, yes, he was a big time lover of that show, and he also right. just recently got married too to to his girl, longtime girlfriend, Rebby Sky. So definitely yes, wish did. them congrats, and you'll be a newlywed along with him pretty soon. And yeah. definitely wish you the best and uh, and uh, life uh, oh, a, a long and happy life together. But Thank uh, you. no yeah. problem. Talking about your rivalry with Matt Taven, we actually had him on the show like like towards the beginning of this year. What do you like about wrestling him, like uh, Matt Taven? Because I know you have, I think you've actually had a, a TV title opportunity once before. Um, I have never had a TV title. You didn't? Oh, I thought you did. I, thought I you did, did like, not. Um, you didn't? It was a four way for an opportunity to oh, okay. That's go a, against him, um, which I did not win in that match. Um, but the match was great, and actually that match, um, that four that did happen, um, Ring of Honor was really impressed with my performance that night. So, um, you know, I got to talk to Ring of Honor a little bit more um, <laughs> after that, and, uh, you know, things started looking really good. Um, but as far as Matt Taven's concerned, um, it, it's funny. Like, m- me and Matt, um, we're actually really close um, um, outside of wrestling, and it's funny. We trained together from the Spike Dudley School. We both trained together. We both came from the same school. Um, yep. And for some reason, I, we've had we had a really good match in the Fall River area, which is at the PAL Hall. It's called, and um, it's a really great building. Really great. Puts off that wrestling vibe. It's one of those buildings that when you go in there and everything's set up and they have the lights, it just really puts off that wrestling, you know, atmosphere kind of feeling. So it gets you into the show. Um, we had a really good match there, but we've had a lot, a lot of bad matches. <laughs> Believe it or not, like, and I think it's because we're both so athletic that when we get in there, we. I want to almost say, like, we try to outdo one another with each other. <laughs> like, uh, and we're, like I said, we're close, too, so it's funny. So we're in there, we're, like, doing our thing and whatever. Like, I just think we get carried away sometimes too much. And, um, you know, sometimes after we're just kind of like, oh, shit, you know, what, what the hell is wrong with us? You know, what, what the hell, what the hell, you know, with both of us. But we... When we want to, we have really good matches. I had a really good match with them. That one match was really great. Um, but Matt Taven's a great performer. He's actually going to – Matt Taven's going to be a big star one day. Definitely a very talented young man, as well as the other um, Ring of Honor star we've had on there, which was uh, Michael Elgin. We had him on in September. Uh, definitely one of the strongest and toughest guys I've seen in Ring of Honor. I mean, <laughs> not taking anything away from anybody else in, in, in Ring of Honor because – just got a talent, just a talented roster of people, and, and oh, whether yeah. it was during the and, time of uh, Jim Cornette there with them, or even now with uh, with um, what is the name of the boss that runs Nigel. it now? Nigel McGinnis. Nigel McGinnis. Excuse me, I, I am Nigel. very forgetful yeah. in my old age, so thank you for helping me out, Austin. <laughs> but um, it's, um, it's a great set of guys yeah, Elgin, and gals that, that is, work with you guys. Yeah, Elgin is is just phenomenal like he I think it you know like you said nothing against anybody else in Ring of Honor and 
everybody is great. Uh, I think he just he Elgin is so fantastic. All his matches are great, and I think Elgin blew up so fast. Um, you know, he got out there quick, like with the, with a snap of the fingers, he was boom. Everybody knew who Michael Elgin was because his matches, all of his matches, is just fantastic. I'm a huge fan of his work. Um, it, yeah, he's great. You know, one of my favorite matches uh, you... this year was from uh, when he wrestled uh, Tommaso Campo, Ch- Champa. I mean, the matches he has with him are phenomenal. I mean, I think the great one of the best matches of the year, the one he had back at uh, I think it was at Border Wars. Yes, with 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 it was with Tommaso, correct? I believe. Yeah, yeah. that was really yeah. good. Uh, yeah, um, like those two guys are just like animals. Like Tommaso is an animal as well. Um, and he's awesome. Like I said earlier, he's probably one of my favorite people to be in the ring with, um, only because he's very intense and he's very into. He loves what he does, and like professional wrestling is Tommaso, and like um, he's somebody that can bring the best out of somebody like myself or somebody that's trying to get to the next level. Like Tommaso pulls it out of you. Like I said, I had a really good match with him in Pittsburgh, and. Um, Ring of Honor still mentions it once in a while to me, you know, well, you know, that match is great that you guys had in Pittsburgh. And, you know, it was because Tommaso, I knew I had to be on my A game wrestling him, and I knew he was going to pull out the best of me. So, yeah, yeah I, Tommaso's great. So, and they're both great, elegant and Tommaso. So, there's, there was no doubt in my mind that match was going to be awesome. Now, who would you say that, um, I mean, well, who would you would you call your dream opponent to have in the ring eventually somewhere down the line? Who would you like to actually get into the ring with and, and have a match, maybe a tag match or a singles match? Uh, Kiefer Sutherland from the Lost Boys. You're a funny guy. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, realistically, though, um, probably, I'd say, like, uh, probably... I'd say Michaels or Punk, one of those two. I would love I to get in the ring with it. I was like, right before this, I'm like, he would be, him versus Punk would be a good thing to see. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm a huge fan of his stuff. And uh, Michaels, like, Michaels would be one of those, like, surreal things if I ever got in the ring with him just because of, well, like, I loved him when I was a kid growing up. So that would be just awesome for <laughs> that ever happened. Either one of them, obviously. But, um, you know, growing up watching Michaels. You know, you always have that those moments where it's kind of really cool. Like um, when I was a teenager, obviously the Hardy Boys were a, a big thing. Um, so when I was able to get in the ring and compete against Matt, um, it was pretty cool. You know, just because He's magical. like I'm sorry. That he is magical, Matt Hardy. Yeah, 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 and and like just being uh, you know a teenager and going to the, the Civic Center with my friends and seeing them in the Dudleys and Edge and Christian do their thing and then like years later um, if you asked me then hey you gonna ever wrestle Matt Hardy I would have probably been like what are you nuts but like uh, it's cool to, you know to, to look back and be like wow I was such a huge Hardy fan or like that era of wrestling and um, here I am across the ring from Matt Hardy and you know I'm about to lock up with him so it's, it's cool you know stuff like that's really cool you know, I did mention. Uh, I did want to mention that um, I noticed that you had um, done something that, whereas, like, where you cut your hair and and I think you donated your hair, if I'm not mistaken. Did I, yeah, did I yeah, that yeah. I, uh, yeah, I uh, I cut my hair and I uh, I donated it to Locks of Love um, for children with cancer. Um, so right. yeah, um, and, and it wasn't even like. It wasn't like, oh, everybody's like, oh, no, don't cut your hair, don't you cut your hair. But, uh, you know, the long hair had it, had it wrong, and, like, I, I, I just wanted to do a good thing, and I thought that was a good thing. And um, Absolutely. Always um, just reinvent, yeah. you know. Yeah, 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 you know, and, and geez, it's, it's a hell of a lot easier with, with short hair now, especially because, like, <laughs> my hair, I don't know if you've seen pictures, but my hair is, like, I have a lot of hair. Like, when it was long, it was super curly, and it was, like, everywhere, and it's just, like, I was like, well, I'm going to get rid of it, so let me look into doing this. So I ended up donating it. So, yeah, I felt good about it, too. So did your fiancé like the new look? 
Yes, everybody actually does, believe it or not. There's a few people here and there that are like, ah, oh, I love, like, you know, chicks are like, ah, oh, I love these curls, your curls. <laughs> but uh, people people dig the show out here better. You know, with, um, you were talking about Shawn Michaels and CM Punk, but what, do you, is that any of your aspirations to actually get to, to WWE one day or even TNA? Uh, yeah. I mean, well, WWE is actually now. always watching Ring of Honor wrestling guys. If you think right, about it, look right. at the guys that brought onto the roster: Punk, Daniel, uh, even Matt Seidel, uh, Evan Antonio Bourne Tavara. at one point. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot, of, a lot of guys. Um, but uh, yeah, of course. I mean, you know what I mean? That's that's the um, that's the prize. That's like what you you know every, you know when you're young. That's that's what you watched, and that's what you you know everybody. You know, I don't care what everybody says. Everybody wants to be on WrestleMania. Um, oh, of course. That anybody that's in professional wrestling would love to be on WrestleMania. Um, so WWE, yeah, I would love to be there. I would love to be anywhere with, um, you know, that can get me out nationally, you know. Like Ring of Honor, I love Ring of Honor. I, you know, hope I can be there permanently soon and someday yeah. and, uh, you know, so... Yeah, any of yeah those but at this point, that, I mean, with you know, there there is a lot more companies now. Obviously, it's not uh, just. I mean, WWE is not just the only place to go. T- TNA has definitely built up a, 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 their company and has been around a lot longer than most gave it credit. So, I mean, that's definitely another possibility, like you said. And, I right. mean, who doesn't want to go out there to their own, you know, to their own music and, and at WrestleMania and have their dream opponent or whoever they're facing at the time? Yeah, that's. I don't think that's anybody's. Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to think right. about, or nobody. Well, you know what I'm saying with that, but right, yeah, absolutely. But you know, if Ring of Honor could, um, where I'm at right now, if Ring of Honor could, you know, like to eventually give me that chance to be like a permanent roster guy, um, that absolutely. would be awesome. And, and I look forward to that if it if it is going to happen. But I'm a patient guy, so just you know, sit back, keep working hard, and do my thing. And if it's meant to happen, it's going to happen. Hey, the, pro- now, the top prospect tournaments like. Like right around the corner, I think they do it every year. So I mean, I imagine if you're put into it, you're definitely gonna be a contender. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I hope so. That'd be great. I would love to be in that. Um, there was talk about last year with me being in it, but um, something had came up where I ended up being in it. But hopefully this year I can be in it, and that'd be great. Now, actually, um, being I mean, being in the wrestling business as long as you have been at this point, have there been any of the uh, older stars, even for that matter, Spike, uh, that have sat you down and, and give you some advice about the wrestling business that kind of stuck with you to this point, something that you, you've you taken with you as far as something that you use in your wrestling career? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I was getting, when I was doing the Ring of Honor stuff, I was kind of getting like... Um, uh, Kind of like, oh, I don't know, are they interested in me or do they want to use me? Um, am I ever going to get a contract somewhere? What's going on? Do I want to do this? Um, am I, you know, I was just kind of like, because I was getting these Ring of Honor shots and I was really happy with them and I wanted to go for. I think I was just anxious is the word I'm looking for and I wanted to go forward so bad and then like, I think I got like kind of lazy like, oh, it's not going to happen, so I'm just going to, like, coast through this and just do it, you know, and just kind of, like, you know, I was kind of, like, down, you know, depressed about it, and, you know, something's going to happen, something's going to happen, see, you know, so, um, Kevin Kelly and a few other people, a few other guys, like Spike, and, you know, actually sat me down and talked to me and just said, you know, um, just love what you do and take a few steps back, like, take a few steps back and have fun with you, what you're doing. Don't worry about um, where you're going to go next or w- w- if you're going to get a contract or what's going to happen. Just kind of take a few steps back, have fun, and if it's meant to happen, it's meant to happen. So you know, um, since that, I've just been kind of like cool, you know. I've just been kind of like doing my thing, you know, and having fun and just – and it actually, um, it actually helped a lot because now I just find myself um, – not so worried about, you know, getting signed here, getting signed there. Just do my thing. I love wrestling. I love to do it. So I'm just wrestling. And uh, I find myself working harder and uh, doing better now. So I know uh, when you mentioned Kevin Kelly, 
he I, I would think he'd definitely be somebody good to talk to because I think you definitely want to get familiar with somebody who's calling your match because I feel that they can give it more give more about you know more into the into the match of, of, of more about you they can actually get more knowledge about you and put more emotion more feeling into it uh, case in point yeah, I mean, you can look at like Jim Ross and, and Steve Austin from the past you know you know get to right, know right. you're a person who's calling your match you know and Kevin Kelly is a great guy like Kevin Kelly has helped me since I started coming since I met Kevin since I started going around like the first ring of honor camp I went to ever since then like I'll email him promos I'll email him everything like ideas thoughts what he thinks I'll ask him all the time and he's always always been there to help um he's a great guy I owe him a lot too oh you know what Austin what's the name of them uh, the manager uh he does a he does a training camp too uh Truth Martini? Oh Truth. Truth Martini, yes, yes. Have you actually gotten a chance to work with Truth? Um, I haven't gotten to work with him. I was helping out on one of the camps um, the last one, and he was there. Um, Truth is super um, smart when it comes to professional wrestling. Because um, he used to wrestle. He used to be a pro. He used to wrestle before he did the managing thing. Um, and he has his school um, up in Michigan, um, the House of Truth there, um, who's tra- who he's trained many, many guys. Um, Truth is super knowledgeable, like, at the camps. Like, I was totally, like, I mean, I knew Truth knew his stuff, and I knew he was really good, but I was, like, blown away at the, uh, you know, when he was teaching the guys at the camp. He's great to learn from. I recommend anybody to, um, you know, you can email him or get in contact with him or however for some advice. Um, he definitely can give out good advice. So. You know, actually, come to think of it, um, I wanted to throw out there, if you actually got the chance, because I believe this is in the same area of uh, just incredible, have you actually got the chance to meet him or work with him at all? Yeah, I've actually uh, done... Um, uh, I'm based out of uh, top, a promotion called Top Row Promotions. It's yes. in uh, like Fall River area. Um, but Just Incredible has done many, many shows with them. And uh, I've been in a locker room many times with him. I've never got to work him in the ring, but I have been in a locker room and I've shows with him many, many times. Um, he actually has been doing this uh, Pro Wrestling 101 uh, camps that he's doing as well. Um, yep. Just thought maybe it's something I can let you know about if you ever were interested in and maybe working something with him, working matches or whatever. I mean, he's doing that. But I just figured I'd throw that out there too. But oh yeah, no, no, yeah, I, mean, I appreciate that. But yeah, I, I, I do, I do know him, and uh, he's been around um, this area for a little while now. He actually started in this area before he went to WWE and did all his his, uh, his run there. Um, but yeah, he still does those shows, and I still see him every now and then. That's cool. I'm sorry, Austin. Did you have a question? Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, Truth Martini being a, well, he's a really interesting general, I mean, a man, I mean manager at ringside, but if you had to, you know, like to, uh, to pick anybody, any manager from any time, whatever, to uh, you think would be matched up well with, who do you think that would be? I think he'd be a Paul uh, Heyman guy. Hey, yeah, anybody is, right? Yeah, Paul Heyman, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but Truth Martini, too, would be great, I think. Like, he would be uh He's somebody that I think would, um, I think he's got a lot of good ideas. So I think he's somebody that could really help me with, um, you know, just just putting things together as far as like ideas and stuff or whatever, you know, our pers- personality or our persona or whatever. Um, so yeah, truth or you know, Paul Heyman for sure. Paul Heyman's one of the smartest guys in professional wrestling. So why not, right? The mad scientist of professional wrestling, yeah, the evil exactly. genius. <laughs> but um, in the in the era of the WWF, WCW, ECW, where, in which of these companies, I mean, would you feel that you would have been able to fit in the most and had probably the more the most fun in uh, during that time? Uh, me personally, I, w- I would I would want to be a WWF. WWE at the time, or uh, that's where I would want to be. Um, so, uh, are we talking like Invasion era and all around there? 
Well, actually, no. I was talking about the 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 uh, mid nineties. Just in general. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, probably WWF. I mean, only because like, I, and to be honest with you, uh, it's funny. Like uh, a lot of my friends growing up always watched both of them, like w, WCW, WWF. Oh, no, I did. Um, I was strictly WWF. And really? not that WCW, yeah, not that WCW was bad. Um, they had great wrestling. The wrestling was great. Actually, a lot of times people said the wrestling was better. But I think in my eyes, WWF had a better production. So I got more invested into it because they had such better production than WCW. WCW might have had the better wrestling at the time, but I think WWF had a better production. I so was going to tell you, yes. If you think about it, though, if you think about the early years of WCW, NWA, they had matches with Sting and Flair, Funk and Flair, Steamboat and Flair. Maybe it was just Flair that was right, right, right. See, and that's where I go as far. And that's where I go as far as like the wrestling was better. Um, yeah. But I always thought WWF put out that production, um, the entertainment part of it. And um, but yeah, uh, WCW had great matches. Um, that obviously I, you know, not watching as a kid, but I followed up with later being involved in professional wrestling. Obviously, I watched a lot of wrestling, but um, at that time, you know, I was, like I said, I was big into, like, the entertainment and the lights and the production and, yay, you know, all that other stuff. So, um, yeah, I felt like WF was big on that. So you know, and, and with their it. biggest character being the Undertaker, at least in the late in the late eighties, early nineties, in my opinion, because I'm an Undertaker fan. Right. And right. we're coming up on the streak once again, uh, maybe twenty two and zero. Uh, who do you think could possibly be a good choice to face the Undertaker, or do you feel maybe the the the, the, the he should finally retire with the streak intact? I think the Undertaker should retire with the streak. Uh, you know, unbroken. I think I think that should be his thing. I, uh, you know, never be in a WrestleMania. I think he should leave with that. Um, I think they should let him leave with that. I, I actually, so I know. I mean, the thing about the guys that he's wrestled for that streak that haven't broken this, you know, like Michaels was one of them, right? Yeah, he faced faced yeah. it two years in a row. Yeah. So I don't know, like who, I, I you know, for I don't know who they would pick for that. Cause they, Who would really know, be worthy of it? Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, if anything, I would think like a Shawn Michaels. You know what I mean? But that didn't happen. So I think. And WWE, Triple H obviously didn't do it three times either that he faced him. Right. I think WWE should just let him uh, have that and let him. That's his thing, you know. Undertaker was never defeated at WrestleMania, in my opinion. Others might feel differently, but. No, no, no. You know what? You hit the nail on the head with me. I, I, I'm glad I finally found a, uh, a guest who would agree with me on that aspect. But, you know. Yeah. Yep. Not many people do. I, I'm one of the sole Undertaker fans that still believe he should retire with the, with the streak intact right off into the sunset and be known yeah. as the man who was never defeated at WrestleMania. I agree. I mean, that's his legacy. Thanks. But, I mean, he's he's every single year, and he's getting older now, and I, I mean, I think, I imagine this year to be his last, but... He always pulls they've it off. They've been saying the last several time. years. Hmm, wait, what? That's what they've said the, they the last several years. Every year he comes back, and it's going to be his last. And You know what? His matches right. have come, come to be bigger than the title matches. They actually yeah. come to WrestleMania yeah. just to see his matches. Yeah, him and Punk were awesome. Yeah. I really they, enjoyed they, him. They, with it being as short as it was, they definitely made the best of it, and, and they put on another great match. Yeah, I mean nothing will ever be like that. Shawn Michaels versus Taker, but uh, no way. I Twenty-five. I was there, fifth row ringside. It was an awesome match. Good for you because that match Keep on was talking, fantastic. Taylor. Keep on talking. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? I drove to Houston, Texas. You don't. You, you want to talk about a long freaking drive, dude? That was a long freaking drive, but it was well worth it. How, how long was the drive? Uh, well, let's just say I. I I went with a buddy of mine, and let's just say we got lost the first time around and lost on the way back. Took us about 27 hours to get there the first time and 32 to get back. Figure that one out. Wow. Yeah. Well, anyways, it was fun. It was a lot yeah, of fun. Well, at least, the fact at least that we got to see that match live. Yes, it was a work of art. Yeah, that's cool. 
Well, I know Ring of Honor actually has a, the um, WrestleCon. They always, Ring of Honor is always with WrestleCon each year. I, yeah. I know that they're going to be coming to New Orleans in uh, in April for Supercard of Honor. I hope to, hope to see you there. I mean, I know with, uh, like we said, with the... Yeah, we definitely got to meet up with you, man. Yeah, yeah, by by that time, hopefully, uh, that'd be great. Or you can, you know, uh, meet each other in person. <laughs> hey. You know, you know, I want to talk about your your tattoos because I know you have a an amazing like your on your arm. Your, your tattoos are amazing. What are if you can so you name a few a few of them? If you can, I don't know if you do it all over the phone, be like, oh well, this one over here. Well, what what are some of them <laughs> that, that you know mean to you? What do they mean to you? Um, I got tons of like stuff, kind of like I got like uh, Jesus, I got tons of stuff on me. It's like crazy, um, but I kind of got um. It's kind of like a half demon, half tiger on the, coming out of the side of my ribs with like a paintbrush in his mouth because I've always been into huge into like uh, art and like making different stuff. And obviously, you saw my pictures online. So, um, but the tiger is like my birth symbol, my Japanese birth symbol. And um, so I kind of like put the two and two together. And the demon's kind of like everybody's got a little demon in them. So <laughs> I kind of like did the two and two. Um, and I have, like, a tree of life on the back going up. Um, and actually, I'm getting a new piece. Um, actually, that means uh, probably most to me um, is uh, I'm getting a big chest piece, and it's going to be, uh, like, the um, Lost Boys, like, boardwalk, like the like the roller coaster and the Ferris wheel. and the, But it's going to be, like, old and rickety with, like, uh, kind of roses around it and, few other things. We're going to incorporate kind of like my love for like movies and film and like all that stuff. And then um, I'm going to get my dog's portrait on my leg. But I got tons of stuff right now. It's just like um, like a lot of traditional stuff like roses and skulls and like I got like a tr- traditional snake and uh, panther on my arm. So it's like a lot of like old school, that traditional style. So that's what I noticed about you the first time I seen you. I seen your tattoos, and that basically brings you out. You know, I mean, that's what makes you like uh, the just like you know how CM Punk's tattoos are. That and sure. you're just showing him like how he is with those tattoos. That it just kind of defines him. You know, um, of right, how right, yeah. Oh, it definitely defines who I am for sure. Like, I think I would look weird without him. <laughs> I mean, I, I, mean, I, I, know, I mean, one day I'm gonna get a Breaking Bad tattoo on my on my forehead. Oh no, he didn't. Oh, I that. forgot this Good tattoo. God. I don't, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how I forgot this tattoo, but the one on my neck, I, it's on my neck, so I don't know. Beats me how I forgot it. Um, it's uh, peacock feathers on both sides coming around, meeting in the middle, um, and that basically means like a change in life, like the change for the better. And that kind of, I got that done when I kind of like went to, uh, I was like kind of like towards like graduating from Spike school so it was like that past of like you know the wrestling before and then I kind of like changed and kind of like finding myself you know mm-hmm. maturing and finding who I really was and whatever so I ended up getting that so that that means something to me too so so do you get him at the same Would exact place or there's like a guy you trust like the most to get him like is there a person you just go to all the time to your tattoos yeah his, his name is actually Heath Arnold and he works at Ambition Tattoo in Johnston, Rhode Island. Oh, okay. Would you actually have, uh, give, give, uh, if given the opportunity, take advantage and, and travel to to uh, work a little bit in Japan? Yes, I would love to do that. Um, absolutely, without question, I would definitely love to do that. At least, you know, do one little uh, shot in Japan would be great. And I think it would be great for me, too, so... And at this point, if you had any advice for a young up-and-comer wanting to get into the business and didn't really know how, I mean, obviously, would you, I mean, what advice would you give them and how would you prepare them if you obviously were going to refer them to Spike, Spike School? Um, I would just, and this, you know, obviously from my story that I told you guys earlier, um, definitely look for a good school, um, a reputable school that has a good trainer. Um, there are a couple of schools up here. Um, uh, you know, Spike Dudley School, obviously, where I came from. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely go in there with a, a, a 
you just go in there, work hard, and be ready to like learn from scratch, basically. So everything that you you know, if you're especially starting from if you're new or if you have limited training to none, just go in there, uh, pretend you don't know anything, and just uh, you know, ears open, listen to Spike. He knows what he's talking about. Um, and there's no the school. Got to perform in WrestleMania. I mean, obviously he knows a little right. bit about what he's done, but he's right, right, right. right. Um, he's gotten a lot of information from the best in the world. So, um, Absolutely. and then there's a uh, New England Pro Wrestling Academy, which is in Andover, Mass. Towards this way in my area, those are the good schools. So that's the the main thing is look for a good reputable school with good trainers if you're serious about going forward with a wrestling career. And hopefully you do make it out to 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 this way for for WrestleMania weekend and get to work at one of the shows out here because when I know for a fact, especially being that I was up in uh, Jersey this year for WrestleMania, they they had WrestleCon, they had a whole bunch of indie shows going on in that area. I right. Could have gone to some of them, but they do. But they put on a whole. It's a whole bunch of things going on. And hey, you always. I'm sure you can always have some fun down here in the Big Easy. Well, down here, down there, Absolutely. In the Big Easy, over there in Austin's neck of the woods. Here, I'm in California, so. Oh, yeah. Are you near Santa Cruz? Uh, no, no, no. I'm actually closer to uh, Rikishi School out here, uh, Knox Pro Wrestling. I'm okay. not sure if you've ever heard of that, but yeah, yeah, yep, I have. Awesome, they've got a great school out here as well. But Absolutely. Um, we have Luke Hawks' uh, Wildcat <clears throat> School in New Orleans. There, there's another good school right there. Wildcat's a good yep. one, very reputable one. Yeah. And if fans want to actually keep up with what you're doing and, and, and where you'll be and so forth, um, what's a good way they can keep up with you? Uh, do you? I mean, obviously you do have a Twitter. Do you, right. you have just a fan, you have a fan page, or do you only have your actual Facebook page? Just my actual Facebook page. Uh, so my Twitter is at Vinny Marsaglia, and then my Facebook is uh, facebook.com slash Vinny Marsaglia. That's like your it. Add me. I will accept you. That's cool. Except That's cool. And we appreciate we that. And he, and in this case, we do thank you for following us on Twitter as well. We've definitely tried Absolutely. to make a make this really a, a big night for you guys, for both uh, you and, and and for Mr. Daniels as well. Yeah, uh, actually, this is one of my. Styles, uh, but, I've sorry, done these. Ahead. I've done these a few times, and actually, this is my uh, probably one of my favorites because you guys actually talk and make conversation, and, uh, ask some pretty cool questions. So thanks for having me again. No, no, no problem. It was a, indeed a pleasure. We thank Austin for setting that up. Um, and, again, uh, we thank you for uh, for sharing the night with Mr. Daniels as they got their big show this coming Sunday night. And and Absolutely. when is your next upcoming show? My next upcoming show actually is this Saturday in West Warwick. Well, thank go. God it's only five minutes from me. And uh, <laughs> it, has a couple, it has some good guys and myself, a few six Jay Lethals on the show. Um, there's a few other guys, so yeah, it'll be a good show. I gotta ask you, um, seeing the kind of work that Jay Lethal has done in TNA, I have to go with TNA because dude was cracking me up in TNA with his Ric Flair imitation, his black machismo character, and just his woo off with Ric Flair. I don't know if you watched that on TNA years ago, yeah, but I don't know. I mean, that had to be some of the best thing, the best work I've seen him do. Not just in the ring, but outside of the ring, as far as the entertainment value. He's Did you ever actually sit down and talk to him about that, or even just about in general, as far as being the entertainment, bringing the entertainment yes. value to the ring? Yes, yes, and he's just natural. He's Jay is completely 100 percent natural when he does. He's just I can't even explain it. He's fantastic. It just <laughs> he's in watching him effortlessly, like in the ring, like his athletic, just effortlessly. He's just fantastic. And you know what really was cool and impressed me about him is that, if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, both of you, um, he, when he brought out the Black Machismo character, I believe he actually did get permission from the Macho Man to actually do a portrayal of it. Is that correct? I believe so. I believe so. Austin, what are your thoughts? Um, well, I think so. I mean, I know he did a. He actually, I don't know if you remember the sum, but it was not a hoopla. Like I think it was a couple months ago. Him and um, Delirious reenacted oh, yes, the entire yes, yes. Um, uh, Savage versus um, Savage versus Warrior match. The entire thing they reenacted, the entire thing. It was pretty cool to see. Yes, you told me about that. They reenacted the whole WrestleMania scenario yeah. with uh, Savage and Warrior. That that had to have been pretty yeah, awesome that to was, watch. Yeah, it was. It was hilarious. Yeah. 
That's pretty cool. And if anybody can pull it off, yes, yes. Any Absolutely. chances of we seeing any matches with you and Jay in the near future? Um, I hope so. Um, it could certainly go point in that direction, so let's hope. And if uh, there is, I will definitely be advertising it, so just keep an eye out. Definitely, you know, definitely let us know. And, uh, as far as posting pictures of your of your wedding, we definitely want to mention it on a future show and throw out a, yeah. a shout-out on a future show. Absolutely, I appreciate that. You know, much respect for what you guys do. I mean, I keep on saying it, but I'm not, I'm not just saying it because you're here. I mean, honestly, thank you so much for whatever, I mean, all you, or whatever, like all the stuff you guys do in the ring and pouring your heart out, everything like it's, it's great. I'm I really enjoy Thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. I know that Austin definitely means that from his heart. He's definitely looking to pursue a career in professional wrestling Soon, once yeah. he becomes of age. He's still a young man, of course, but that's why I'm doing the YouTube uh, classes. All right, man. Good go. luck, then. Thank you. But um, on behalf of myself and Austin, uh, Vinny, we thank you so much for taking time tonight and chatting with us. And it's just like you said, it's just about having fun. Just. Uh, you know, you tell us about your how you got your start, and just have fun with it, and have, just talk wrestling above anything else. That's what we did tonight. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, wish you the best of luck, and you know what? Hopefully, somewhere down the road, we can say we are talking to a future WWE star, or for that matter, a future Ring of Honor star. Ring of Honor champion. I see in the future. Yeah. A world heavyweight you champion. Never know. Hey, that's an even better title. I like the ring to that. Never know. It's hard work, but we'll see. But thank you guys. Thanks again. No problem, man. You have yourself a good night. You too. All right. Bye-bye.